For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. And I think there's a constant battle that is going on in our mind. At least it is in my mind. There's a constant battle going on between good and evil, between me allowing God to be God and and or me being God, me make, taking control of my life, letting God take control of my life. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the JourneyWise podcast, where we discuss matters of faith and wellness. My name is James Kent. I'm joined by my father, Ronnie Kent. Dad, how are you doing today? I'm great. Today, we're going to be discussing intellectual wellness. Maybe help the the listeners understand when we say intellectual wellness, what we are talking about. So, you know, I I had to actually look this up for a more comprehensive type definition, but you know, basically for me, intellectual wellness is your ability to use your mind to uh, to live in the world that that you live in uh, and and participate in a way that not only causes you to uh, have a sense of well-being, but also allows other people around you to benefit from uh, what you bring to, to life, uh, your experiences, your wisdom, your your expectations. But. So, but in looking at a more formal definition of intellectual wellness, uh, I found one source that said it consists of critical thinking, stimulating curiosity, problem solving, and creativity. Uh, It isn't confined to the classroom or office, but instead requires lifelong sustainment and cultivation. And I think that's something that people really need to to grab hold of, I, you know, you and I have spent a whole lot of our life in the classroom. Uh, and I think I, I may be speaking for you, but uh, in in watching you in the process, I think you would agree with me that that was not the funnest experience of our life. We are much more application than we are acquisition of knowledge. Uh, so, you know, trying to say that the way to intellectual wellness is in the classroom or uh, always, you know, reading a book and or always exposing yourself to new information, all of which I think is a part of it. But to say it's limited to that, I think would not only uh, be an error, but I think it would cause a lot of people to say, well, there's not much chance of me being intellectually well. So I think I think. What people have to do is broaden maybe their scope of what they consider intellectual wellness. You know, in the grand scheme of things, your brain is uh, similar to, you know, muscles in the body. It's something that you can work out, so to speak. And really, I think when we're talking about intellectual wellness, it's the idea of are you in being intentional in the same way that we have to be intentional about diet or exercise or sleep um are you being intentional about working out your brain and and challenging yourself uh learning new things you know i i say it wrong sometimes but uh something i'm recently trying to better understand is uh growing vegetables and gardening um something you've done for decades and Granddaddy did for a long time uh, really well. It's really just uh, trying to advance, trying to learn new things. The truth is you're going to forget a lot, too. I mean, you, you know. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, don't, let's don't bring up real personal things here. So. Well, it, the funny thing about uh, achieving maybe higher academic levels, you know, you and I both have doctorate degrees, is – it would, if people knew how much we didn't remember. <laughs> it's a very scary thought. They may not trust us much, um, but uh, it's not about remembering everything. It's uh, more so about, you know, advancing. Uh, again, being intentional. I know that you are a big fan of the idea of mindsets. So, 
how do how do mindsets fit in with intellectual wellness? Well, I, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. but but no. Well, I think that you know there can be kind of a checklist. Uh, I'm I want to do two things before we get to that because you know I, as my mother always said, Ronnie, you can run it in the ground and break it off. I know people have heard me talk about mindsets. They're probably saying, "Oh my goodness, he's going to do that again." I'm not listening to this, but. But I, I, they're just, to me, so critical in in the idea of what we of how we acquire information and and how we use situations to continue to learn. Uh, but but the two things I'd like to talk about uh, before that are number one is kind of what can, what kind of little checklist can you go through? And I actually found this at the University of New Hampshire's website uh, about uh, intellectual wellness. And it talks about uh, signs of intellectual wellness. And I think they were pretty, they're pretty cool. It was about seven or eight of them. Development of good study skills and time management. Uh, it's not that you can't learn from fiction, uh, and you, because you can. And I think fiction is great. But in particular, if you spend a whole lot of time like watching television or watching the internet, things on the internet that are simply entertaining, I think you have to be careful that your time management has some part, some degree of acquisition of some factual type, nonfiction type information, like gardening. I mean, I think it's very stimulating to for your development of your mind and your intellectual wellness to learn new topics. And that's one of the things uh, that it talks about. Challenge yourself to do uh, to learn new things and to look at all sides of an issue and try not to enter into it with a predetermined way of thinking about something. In other words, be a critical thinker um, and, and expose yourself to new ideas, views, and opinions. Um, and to people. I mean, you know, because we tend to, you know, birds of a feather flock together. And I, I think that can be intellectually stimulating. I have a great group of friends that, uh, you know, challenge me all the time because they, they're they bright guys and and they are they're in different areas of life and and uh so we talk about topics that that really stimulate me to in fact we'll talk about something and i have to go read about it because i'm sitting there not even participating in the conversation i don't know enough about so know your worldview know know how you address things uh because that will definitely affect how you how you approach learning uh in new things and also assessing uh, new ideas that other people present. So that's the one thing. The second thing I like to talk about, since we certainly want to uh, bring God into the conversation and, and what he thinks about our mind, because, you know, we, we basically base our whole concept of wellness on what Jesus, how Jesus responded to the question of what's the greatest commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength in Mark 12. Uh, that that you know the, talking about the mind and thinking and learning is all throughout the bible i actually looked up the references and i've, I've copied some of them to to read and talk about but there were just reams of them i, I mean I, I couldn't even think about about the proverbs and the psalms about about it but you know i i basically uh, there's one reference from the old testament all the rest of them are the new testament not not anything against like I say, Proverbs and Psalms, but just trying to trying to look at that. And I'm just going to read a part of these verses because I literally have a page and a half of verses that that I could read. <clears throat> but OK, looking at Romans eight and Romans eight, uh, Paul says, set your mind on things of the spirit. He said, in particular, don't set your mind. And that that verb verb is really allow yourself your mind to be set. In other words, it's, it's you, you go to God to let him uh, help you have have the uh, the right mindset of things. And then Colossians three says, "Set your mind on things that are above." Uh, Romans twelve, we know we quote a lot. You know, renew your mind. You know, don't let your mind stay where it is. Renew your mind about uh, that will transform you. Uh, then that Old Testament references from Isaiah twenty six, and this is this has huge implications. Uh, because as we've said before, you know, as we talk about wellness and those eight aspects of wellness that we're looking at, 
um, even if we if we narrow it down to those four heart, soul, mind, and strength, you know, it's impossible to categorize those and say this is all that that. I mean, you can talk only about mind because that's all that it involves. Well, mind carries over into every aspect, and this verse uh, Isaiah twenty six three. Uh, is a great reminder of that. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So that has the concept of mind. It has the concept of emotion, perfect peace. And it has the concept of faith, that faith and wellness that we talk about because he trusts in you. So how, how you allow God to uh, control your mind, your thinking uh, has a lot to do with your emotional health, perfect peace. That's what folks are after. And then, of course, uh, the passage that we are so familiar with uh, is in Philippians 4, where he says, you know, if anything's uh, uh, excellent or praiseworthy, the, the, well, true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise, think about such things. And then he goes on to say, put it into practice so that, uh, Paul is trying to tell us that you have to think it's a cognitive thing. You're using your mind to do it, but it's not going to be automatic. Uh, you have to put it into practice. You have to keep learning. You have to keep pra practicing these things so that they become reflexive and you have to be intentional about it every time, which we've talked about before. Second Corinthians 10 says, take every thought captive uh, to obey Christ. Uh, Philippians 2 says, have this mind among yourselves, which your, is yours in Christ Jesus. First Peter 1 says, preparing your mind for action. Be sober-minded. Um, in 1 Corinthians 2, we have the mind of Christ. What a promise that we have been blessed with the mind of Christ if we are in Christ. And we have to allow him, here again by that Romans 12, to renew our mind so that it can be transformed uh, and not conformed, transformed into the mind of Christ, not conformed to the way the world thinks. And then finally, uh, one, I know one of your favorite verses, and I know your wife Jessica's <laughs> real favorite verse, Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and the promise is you will find rest for your souls. So Jesus is saying we can learn, not just feel he, him uh, in our life. And so I think that all of those passages really point to the fact that God gave us a mind to be used, not just in the realm of maybe making a living or, or uh, the, what we might consider intellectual things, but in a much deeper way to know him more. And the no, more we know him, the more we become like him, the more we become like him, the more we are able to love like him. So uh, it, I think I think people uh, don't do, give themselves credit, uh, in particular Christians don't do themselves credit when they don't uh, uh, look at uh, how, the, how God uses our mind to really help us be who he wants us to be and to become all that he wants us to become. Why do you think people struggle in the area of really just kind of set your mind on things above? Why, why is that not easier um, for us to do, do you think? Well, first of all, and I, I know I say this a lot, but I think that people uh, for some reason think it's kind of unintellectual. Is that the right word? It's not very intellectual to think that there's a, there's a realm there that uh, is outside of what we can fully be aware of with our senses. I think I think that that the devil, Satan's real attack on us. One area, it's like that that passage I was talking about uh, in Romans uh, says, "For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh." But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. And I think there's a constant battle that is going on in our mind. At least it is in my mind. There's a constant battle going on between good and evil, between me allowing God to be God and, and or me being God, me make, taking control of my life, letting God take control of my life. And I think that uh, 
that's really part of the reason. I think the other is that, uh, and, and you can speak to this, I think maybe in the next podcast we plan on doing, you know, I think that there's that emotional aspect of our of our thinking, of our cognitive ability, where, as we say, the old amygdala takes over instead of our prefrontal cortex. And I think that we we let our feelings control our thinking and not our our thinking. I mean, you know, and our thinking control our feelings. And, and you know, Mary Brooke, my granddaughter, your niece, you know, we, we with her anxiety issues, we've we've talked about a lot. Fact, not feeling, fact, not feeling. And she's doing so much better with that, that uh, if you if you deal cognitively with life much more than you deal with, with the emotional or feeling part of life, it helps you be so much more aware of who God is and how he is in control of your life. So I think the struggle is there. And the second thing I think the big thing is that I think God wants us to depend on him. And we can do it if we can do it by ourselves. Uh, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but we probably would not pay nearly as much attention. I know I wouldn't to, to God in my life. Uh, and so I think that in every aspect of those th- of those four areas, heart, soul, mind, and strength, we we need to depend on him. It certainly doesn't seem like this is the idea of of a spiritual mind or, or even a spiritual mindset focus on things above the renewing of your mind i don't i don't hear that discussed as often as it it seems like it should be in in christian circles you know um it's, it's kind of amazing if you think about it that the mind is really um I mean, it's our lens into the world. It is everything goes through our conscious mind. And so it's it's kind of one of those things. I don't know. It's, uh, you know, just sitting here thinking about it. It's kind of crazy that we don't talk about it more or pay more attention to it because it's also something that it's relatively easy. I would say to set your mind on things above to uh, intentionally focus the mind in a direction. Wouldn't you say that, I mean, in your efforts or, or in your efforts to help others, um, is it particularly hard to do or do you, do you think that it's fairly easy? <laughs> well, I think it's just like we talk about so much in, in the classes we teach and, and everything that, most everything that you do uh, is is going to have to initially be very intentional. Um, you know, when we always talk about compare, I mean, walking, you know, when you are learning to walk, you, um, yeah, you know, you're fighting against a force. I mean, I'm not getting Star Warsy on you, but, you know, uh, you're fighting for, against the force of gravity that is is not in favor of you walking. It's trying to pull you down. And in some ways, that's just like Satan trying to pull you down. So you have to be very intentional and think really hard about walking and putting one step in front of the other. It's, it's awkward. You have way more failure than you do success. And it's frustrating. And yet now most adults, I would certainly hope, unless there's a, a neurological problem or some other issue, uh, that... You know, you don't even think about walking now. And I think the same way is about spiritual thinking. I think spiritual mindset. Um, I think we are we live in a fallen world. And unfortunately, we the, the gravity, the pull of us is toward our natural man. And and yet that's what Jesus said. I came to set you free uh, so that you wouldn't have to live uh, that way and that that by knowing me, you know what real life is supposed to be. And I, I, so I think, I think at first, and I think nothing is better in my life. I'm not going to make this. Nothing is better for my intellectual wellness, for my setting my mind on things above, for my uh, renewing my mind, for my dealing with life. Nothing is better than scripture and 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 you start off reading it, and and then hopefully you move from reading it to memorizing it, 
And what that does is allow scripture to be alive in your brain all the time. And I've said it before, the more scripture I memorize, the more I'm at able to reflexively not at first scripture memorization is extremely intentional or at least it is for me i have to work hard at it and 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 yet we're told in second peter the first chapter make every effort to to have the mind of christ you know uh and, and so you know but but the more reflexive it becomes i can be in a situation where something comes up and Scripture will just automatically that I've memorized jump into my brain, and and without any effort, it, it's as if God through His Spirit just blesses that memorization and brings it to mind. And I think that's why a lot of the times that verb "set your mind on things above" is a passive verb that says allow your mind to be set on things above. Mm-hmm. God's saying, allow me to have control of your brain and not let the world have control of your brain. So I think initially it's tough. But I really believe that the more effort people put it into practice, the more it becomes reflexive and we're able to do it uh, without as much effort. Well, what else is uh, what else do we need to know uh, today in terms of intellectual wellness? Well, I tell you what, what we might do since we're getting kind of the end, we might kind of work on just take the first few minutes next time about mindsets, because I do think that's important. But I, will, I mean, I, I think one of the other reasons that people I have seen, e- e- certainly in my own life, but it's just like your gardening thing. I think one of the pe- reasons people don't start gardening is the fear, fear of failure. I think I think it's kind of like my beekeeping you know, my buddy John and I talk about it. It's a great source of humility when in, in our in, in keeping honeybees because they Y'all just leave. thousands. Yeah, I've killed thousands. They just leave for no reason. It's just so <laughs> frustrating. You think you're doing all the right things, and so I think the fear of failure keeps people from exploring intellectual wellness. Well, I won't be able to do that. I. I'll, I'll fail and know if I start. I have got some things that maybe people know. I really wasn't aware of this list. I've got 15, and I'm not going to cover all 15, but I will cover some because if if what I'm about to say doesn't cause you to, to say, gracious, glory, it's okay to fail, you're just not listening. And you can research these. I, I think these are accurate, but let's just start with vacuum cleaners. Okay, that's just to me is just... Oh, Sir James Dyson, you know, for the Dyson vacuum cleaner. Listen to this. The number of failed prototypes before he created the vacuum cleaner that now gives him a net worth of 4.5 with a B billion dollars. Okay. The prototypes that failed were 5,126. 5,126 didn't work. 5,127. If he had stopped at any time, he would not have been successful. Now, if you don't hear anything else, that should be that should be it. Okay, uh, Steven Spielberg. They rejected. He was rejected twice uh, by the University of Southern California School of Cinema, Cinematic Arts. In other words, he couldn't get into the school. Now they have built a building in his honor. Okay, so they wouldn't let him into school. Now the, he's he's got a building. Of course, Thomas Edison. We know. They, he was told by his teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything. What his teachers told him. That's, uh, that's, some, that's the way to build up a student right there. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, Walt Disney was told by a newspaper editor that he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. This is a good, great quote from Walt Disney. I think it's important to have a good, hard failure when you're young because it makes you kind of aware of what can happen to you. Because of it, I've never had any fear in my whole life when we've been near collapse and all of that. I've never been afraid. Mm. And I think that uh, that fear of fear. Albert Einstein, they initially thought he was mentally handicapped. <laughs> J.K. Rawlings, okay? Probably, if not the richest woman in the world, you know, uh, she was a broke, depressed, divorced, single mother simultaneously writing a novel while studying. Uh, and uh, she, it is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all. Mm. 
in which case you fail by default. Just a couple of more. Abraham Lincoln, we know he failed at everything until he ran for president. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld was booed off the stage the first time he got up to do comedy. Listen to this. Theodore Seuss Giesel, who his first book was rejected by 27 different publishers. And now he has sold more than 600 million copies. 27 people said his book was no good. And now he sold, sold all those, all those copies. Stephen King, listen to this. Stephen King's first book was rejected 30 times. He threw it in the garbage. His wife went and retrieved it out of the garbage and resubmitted it. And now you know who, what Stephen King has done. Uh, and of course, Van Gogh didn't really sell but one painting before he died. Now his paintings are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And I, this is one that a lot of people might identify with, especially any guys out there or whatever. It's a great mic. Oh, Elvis Presley was told to go back to driving trucks after his first performance at Op, uh, uh, Opryland, uh, Grand Ole Opry. Guy told him, you might as well give up and go back and drive, drive a truck. Um, but Elvis threw his keys away so he couldn't be tempted to do that. Uh, but Michael Jordan, uh, was cut from his high school basketball team. Okay. And his quote is, I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games on 26 occasions. I have been entrusted to take the game winning shot and I missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Mm. That failure, and we're going to talk more about that, about, about that mindset. But it's so important to set your mind on not failure but success and do not let fa the fear of failure drive you so that you don't press on in intellectual wellness. It's certainly the people who their identity is not rooted in their performance. Uh, and that is so important. In the same way that, you know, as a Christian, our identity is not rooted in our flesh or our sin. It is uh, hopefully once you have you know become a follower of Jesus uh, and make him Lord of your life, it your identity is in him, in the master. So um, <clears throat> we have such a gift in him in terms of the ability to link in with him and, and through the Holy spirit and using things like scripture to, I mean, really be blessed, frankly, um, to have the mind of Christ is to, uh, it is a blessing. So um, we, want to thank, we want to thank everybody for listening today and definitely stay tuned, uh, for our next episode. And we will continue talking about intellectual wellness and in particular talk about some mindsets that go along with it. And we'll talk more for any of you who may struggle with mental illness and how that can affect uh, our mind and intellectual wellness as well. But uh, thank you for listening. If you'd like more resources, please go check out our website at journeywise.network. Uh, and we have other resources there you can you can um, tap into. And then also we have a prayer wall there. So if you need prayer, please don't hesitate to post there. Um, but for dad and myself, thank you for listening. Hey guys, it's Shane. We're so excited that you're on this journey and we want to thank you for joining us. If you like what you hear, it would mean a lot if you'd subscribe to the podcast and give us a five-star rating and review. And of course, stay tuned to all that God's doing and working to make all of us journey wise.